Here's how to spruce up those empty garage walls with some canvas prints of your vehicles and how to make sure that they're measured and spaced out and hung properly. I finally got the holes repaired and all the scuffs and everything repainted. So I have these nice clean garage walls, but they're a little blah and just plain white. So I picked out some of my favorite photos of each of the vehicles and had them enlarged into canvas prints of a 24 by 36 inch size. I also dug in the hardware bin to find 10 brackets to hang them, two on each. Before I commit to the brackets, I need to make sure they're going to work. I know that they'll go in the bracket mounted on the canvas, but it looks like they're hanging too far out and they're not going to go on smoothly from a vertical standpoint. But I can fix that with some pliers. All I need to do is pinch the bottom to make it more vertical so that it'll go in place easier and that way the mounting hardware will end up straight with the wall and with the canvas when it's in place. Not even close to OCD but I do want the brackets to match the white walls so I'm going to paint all these white and I figured out a way to use wire to hang the hardware and a cardboard box to be able to paint the heads of the nails only so that there's not too much paint buildup going into the mounting brackets. Don't be jealous of my highly engineered paint booth and bracket work. As you can see with the 185 sign, I've basically put it in a position where my eyes are looking at about a third down from the top. It's easier to look down than up and I'm a little bit on the tall side. So I want my eyes to be at that top third point and be able to scan down and someone shorter will be able to look up a little bit. Now I want the canvases to also match that general concept. So I'm going to draw my first line with a pencil because it's easy to erase and I'm going to draw it at the same height as my eyes. Now the canvases are 24 inches high so if a third down from that would be 24 divided by 3 is 8 so 8 inches down and then you have 16 inches left on the bottom. So I want a line eight inches down from the top to be even with the eyesight line that I just drew on the wall. So I'm gonna measure the amount of available wall space I have. So I'm gonna start at the very edge of the garage wall and I'm gonna move back towards the doorway. There's this step here as well and so I'm gonna account for amount of space that I have between that edge and the open door. Now I'm going to go to the other side and do the same thing except this time I've only got a few inches more past that step where I start running into that shelf. Okay so I've got a little over 15 feet here and then I've got a few inches to the door. I've got my height that I want. What I've done is add the total wall space. I figured out that there's three pictures at 36 inches a piece and I found the leftover which I divide up into my four gaps and that tells me how much per gap. Now on the bottom, what I'm going to do is for the other side, I only have two pictures and I have a different wall space. So I'm going to use the same gap between them and then split the difference outside of the two pictures. That way the gap between the pictures is the same for both walls. And I also decided to stop at the step as far as available wall space. So on the first wall, it goes all the way from the edge to the step. On the other wall, it's going to go from the sprinkler system control to the step. So now I'm going to measure where the edge of the first canvas is going to go. And now I'm going to measure the distance from the edge of the canvas to the center of that hanger bracket. I'm going to put a center line here for where that first bracket's going to go. And now I'm going to measure the height based on where I want my eyesight to be with respect to the canvas. And I'll make a mark there to know where to put my first bracket. There's the first white bracket with its two white headed nails. Hammer those two nails in place. Now I'm just going to make sure that the hanger bracket on the canvas will slide in place into the mounting bracket. It'll help if I get the right canvas to hang first. Now I'm measuring the center to center distance on the hanging brackets and it's exactly 24 inches. Now I'm going to measure 24 inches over from the first mounting bracket so I know where to put the second one. Then I'm going to use the level so I know that it's at exactly the right height to keep the canvas level. Notice my talented talons getting the stool over here so I can grab the hammer and not lose my place. Let's make sure it's level again. The next step is actually hanging the canvas. You want to make real sure that the brackets are in place and solid. The last thing you want is for anything to fall off the wall onto your vehicles. 
That's part of why I waited and just chose these canvases. They're lightweight. I feel like I can get them on the wall very solid with minimal risk of coming off. And even if they would, it's not gonna be near as damaging as if I start hanging motorcycle parts on the walls. Only you can prevent damage to your vehicles. With the first one hung, it's on to the next one. Now I'm gonna measure from the edge of the first canvas over the amount of the gap plus the distance from the hanger bracket to the edge. So this distance, the gap plus the edge to bracket, that's gonna tell me where my first bracket goes on the second canvas. With that mark in place, I'm gonna use the level and the steel rule to be able to figure out exactly the right height for that bracket as well. Then I'll measure over to the second bracket, just like I did on the first, except I've now realized that my level is exactly 24 inches long, which is the same distance between the two centers of the brackets. So I can just use the level itself to go from center to center of the two brackets per canvas and make sure they're at the right level. With the second bracket in place, it's time to hang the canvas. That's two done and on to the third. That wall's finished, now over to the other wall and repeat the process, but a bigger gap on each side of them. And that's the final product. And some people do like a little bit more random garage decorations as far as different posters and pieces of vehicles and that. You can do that as well. I chose to just use the same size and style of photograph for each of these of the vehicles out in the garage. Even though it doesn't fit the original five, I put one more photo that I did from a shootout here in the garage and some Photoshop work that you can kind of see mimics the old Too Fast for Love Motley Crew cover. This still adds a little bit of variety in the displays while not messing with the consistency of the two sidewalls. Subscribe to my YouTube channel below and let's celebrate turning fuel and air into adrenaline.